Joining me right now is Michigan Congressman John James, a member of the House Foreign Affairs, Transportation and Infrastructure Committees. He's also an Iraq War veteran. Thank you so much, sir, for your service to our great country. And, Congressman, when you hear things like that, as a veteran yourself uh, in Iraq, what do you say at this moment in time that the U.S. is actually holding back weapons to Israel during the fight of its for its survival? It is frightfully naive of the administration, and it's cowardice in the face of the enemy. I've been to war, and I've faced uh, militias trained by Iran, and I know for a fact the only thing these terrorists understand is a warhead to the forehead. This administration is negotiating with terrorists, and that leads to more American lives in danger. Under this administration, under this administration, it's open season on America. I, I, I'm old enough to remember back when we didn't negotiate with terrorists. But the only people we were negotiating with during the Trump administration was normalizing relations between Arabs and the Israelis. What we were doing was moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. We were doing things to cause peace in the Middle East under President Trump's leadership because the world respected the United States of America. Under this confused old man, the world is backing away from America, and Americans are less safe. I got to tell you, I, I think this is becoming a red line for Jewish voters uh, and, and even independent voters, because they see that now is not the time to hold back weapons to Israel, especially in the face of all of these protests underway. We've got live pictures right now at the University of Pennsylvania. Protesters are on the ground again. And they are fighting to stop any relationship between the University of Pennsylvania and Israel. And now is the time that Joe Biden says we're not going to send weapons there. Does that suggest he's siding with these protesters who are being arrested right now? Look, these, these liberal professors uh, have been sowing these seeds of chaos for decades, and now we're surprised? They've been teaching generations of young kids that the Constitution is broken and that capitalism is evil. And, and now we're surprised when they're chanting death to America. I'm telling you, our enemies are sowing the seeds that have—they're uh, they're, they're reaping the harvest. They're reaping the harvest from the seeds that have been sown from these liberal campus administrators who don't know how the real world works. Um, you know, frankly, if, if these agitators were willing to wake up and, and, and work as hard um, with the, the labor shortage that we have in this country, uh, then they probably would have more money in their pockets, and they probably wouldn't be out there causing, causing uh, pay, uh, failure uh, for our universities. These are being funded by our, by our, uh, our enemies, Iran and Russia, and, and we need to open our eyes. Joe Biden is more beholden to our enemies than he is to the United States of America. So White House National Security Communications Advisor John Kirby is doubling down now on Biden's ultimatum. He's adding his own views on how Rafa and an invasion there would affect Hamas. Watch this. I think the president was uh, uh, crystal clear last night that, that, that if they do uh, smash into Rafa, go in and invade in a major way, then no, he's going to have to make future decisions. But again, we hope we, don't, we hope it doesn't come to that. Our view is uh, that uh, Rafa operations, certainly uh, any kind of major uh, Rafa ground operation, would actually strengthen Hamas's hands uh, at the negotiating table, not Israel's. So, Congressman, what about that? I mean, you know this situation. You know what voters in Michigan are saying. What we keep hearing from the Israeli side is that the, the terrorists, the Hamas fighters, are in Rafah. Are they there or not? Uh, the Hamas terrorists are, are everywhere, but their home base is in Rafah. That okay. is—that's the only place they have to go. Uh, and Israel still remembers October 7th. They still remember the, the rape and murder of women. They still remember the merciless slaying and, and the largest— um, the largest uh, killing of Jews since the Holocaust. And so here's the thing. They would only negotiate if they felt like they were losing. But when you see the America backing away from Israel, it teaches Hamas and the terrorists that they are winning. Joe Biden and his administration are teaching Hamas and terrorists they're winning. And right. what else would they have to go on? This yeah. policy of appeasement from Democrats all the way from the Iran nuclear deal to giving Iran billions of dollars that funded Hamas in the first place to not enforcing 
sanctions that Congress already has, in, in, in addition to withholding weapons now, Joe Biden has told Hamas that he is on the side of Iran. Joe Biden has told Hamas that he is on the side of, of, the, uh, of, of Hamas. And we absolutely must change path now. So a lot of critics are saying that the reason that uh, the Biden administration is doing all of this, pushing back on Israel, is because it's afraid that it's lost the pro-Palestinian vote. So you're there in Michigan. I want you to tell us a little about the constituency there. Uh, do you feel that the Michigan voter or some Michigan voters are mad about the Israeli situation and that he's lost the pro-Palestinian vote? Because they say that's all this is about, that it's not even about the wherewithal of these weapons and what Israel needs. It's about Joe Biden losing the pro-Palestinian vote in Michigan and in Minnesota. Look, uh, I mean, it's tough to see it as as, uh, as very much else than politically motivated. Uh, Joe Biden is good at one thing. I mean, how do you alienate Jewish voters and Muslim voters at the exact same time. He's literally that bad. But the reason why Michigan voters are most ticked off at Joe Biden is his policies are failing. His policies right. have caused inflation okay. that, that are pushing prices uh, um, too high for everyone else. And, and Joe Biden, I think, cares more about keeping his power than standing by our allies. And, yeah. and that should be disqualifying for well, re-election. That's, that's, that's quite discouraging. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll keep on it. John James joining us this morning in Michigan. Thank you, sir.